Today in our 2005 New Way Hitchhiker, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Hydrostar Electric Over Hydraulic Actuator with Line Kit for disc brakes, offering 1600 PSI. The part number is CAR-HBA16-2. Now here's our Hydrostar brake actuator installed. As you can see, it's a nice slim design. It doesn't take up a lot of room, and it's definitely an ideal choice for wanting to add hydraulic brakes to your camper or improving the already existing hydraulic brake system in your camper if you've got the traditional style to an electric over hydraulic style. So we can have direct control of the braking of the trailer from the cab of our vehicle with use of an electronic brake controller. Now these come in two different varieties. We've got either the disc brake type or the drum brake type. You wanna be sure that the actuator you get matches the type brakes that you have on your trailer. This one happens to be the disc brake style. And what happens here is that we've got our brake fluid in a reservoir. When we hit the brakes in our vehicle, the actuator is gonna respond just like the old electric brakes would. So we hit the brakes in the vehicle, our brake controller sends back the signal, and that's gonna tell our actuator how much power it needs to send out to our disc brakes to bring everything safely to a stop. It's a pretty straightforward wiring system. You've got four wires. One's gonna to go to power, one's gonna to go to ground, one's gonna to go to the breakaway kit, and the other one goes to, of course, the brake signal coming back from your truck. So it's not too difficult of an installation to do, and it's really gonna give you superior control over the brakes that you have, especially if you had the old hydraulic style pressure actuator. In that case, you have that surge, like when you're going downhill, you'll feel that bumping kind of from the trailer pushing on the back of the truck and the brakes being applied. This is gonna give you a lot more comfortable ride in that situation as well. There are two mounting tabs on the actuator. We've got one on the front side here, one on the back side, or you could flip it around the other way, it really doesn't matter. But you'll see the mounting tabs there. It's just gonna take two screws to attach it. It's gonna make it work out really well, even if you're putting it on kind of a narrow tongue or something, it'll sit up there fine. Not really any issues to worry about there with the attachment points. You wanna make sure that your cap stays open and accessible. That's where you're gonna fill the reservoir, maintain the brake fluid level, and it's gonna have a bleeder screw. It's also conveniently located. You're not gonna to have to really work to get to it. That's gonna help us bleed out any air in the system initially, or if we have to make any repairs down the road. So all in all, the actuator is gonna take the electronic signals coming back from our truck or from the breakaway kit, and it's gonna convert that into brake fluid pressure. Now the brake fluid that comes through here is gonna be what is going to activate the disc or the drums, whatever style hydraulic brakes that you have. Another advantage to the Hydrostar is that when used in conjunction with a proportional brake controller, we're gonna get much smoother and much more effective braking. In the event of an emergency sway situation, we also have the use of the manual override lever on that brake controller. So that's gonna allow us to apply brakes to just the trailer and bring everything under control. Now the entire body of the Hydrostar is constructed out of aluminum, so we're gonna have superior corrosion resistance, and it's gonna look good for a long time to come. Now in this installation, the only thing that we added was a 90 degree male flexible brake line at 17 and three quarters of an inch long. That was the only additional thing. Of course, some wire loom, you're gonna need a couple zip ties, you're gonna need some, some silicone sealant, but this hose was the only thing that didn't come with the kit. We actually had enough line that we actually cut those lines down with the double flaring tool kit to the appropriate length so we didn't have to put any coils. So you should have more than enough to get the brakes installed on this trailer just with the one exception of purchasing 17 and 3 quarter inch. It's gonna be a male on the 90 side, female on the other side. Then your hard light brake line will go right in if you decide to route it the way we did. Also in our kit, we've got the breakaway battery box, batteries included. It's the push to test type. So we can just push the button there and make sure we've got positive charge. It comes with a breakaway switch in the event of an accidental separation from the back of the truck. This will be pulled activating those brakes, bringing our camper to a stop for us. When we begin our installation, we need to start putting our components in place. We've got our breakaway switch. You want this to be mounted up towards the front of the camper. The hole on it should face forward. You can see the metal tab we're going to use for attachment. And we're just going to go off one of the screws on the bottom side of the camper. These self-tapping screws to kind of hold this nose cone on. 
So we'll be able to use one of those to secure our breakaway. Just want that snug, so you can't really move it around too much. Next, we'll move on to our battery box. Now the breakaway box is gonna store the battery that we'll need if we have a breakaway. It's got three holes on it there. We're gonna go up here off our pin box. Don't wanna cover up our hole here in case there ever needs to be an adjustment. And then of course, check in behind to make sure you don't have anything that might be in the way. And once you have that where you want it, we're gonna mark those hole locations and we're gonna pre-drill these. Mark them out there to make them a little more visible. Now we're gonna be securing this using some number 12 self-tapping screws. So we're gonna use a 5 30 second bit to drill out our holes. All right. Now we're gonna use a little bit of electrical tape just to come down a little bit away from our breakaway switch and from our breakaway battery. This kind of helps to clean up the look of it a bit. Then once we have all of our connections made, we'll kind of tape it all up to make it look real nice. All right, that should be good for now. Now we're going to get our actuator installed. As you can see, it's a pretty narrow style actuator. It's going to give you a lot of options as far as where you can mount it. Two of the biggest things that you want to be concerned with is that the material you're mounting it to is gonna be nice and solid, and that you can access the cap here to fill fluid. We're on the left side of the camper, or the driver's side, what would be the driver's side of the camper. We're in here right behind the battery box. This is gonna be your first main basement door behind where the water, city water fill is. We've got a panel here. We're gonna remove this panel. It's just held in place with some hook and loop material. You'll see in behind that, we got a pretty nice open area here. We're gonna utilize this area right here to mount the actuator. Just like that. It's just important that we keep it inside of the hook and loop. So it has to be behind this, has to be inside of that, and it has to be inside of that. So it's like that'll be fine. And that's also gonna put our wiring right up here where we can conveniently make our connections and route it up towards the front of the camper with the rest of the wiring. To get it in position, we're gonna use a couple of number 12 self-tapping screws. These are gonna be a little shorter than what we used on the front, and we're gonna secure it right down to the solid floor. This is gonna be where your brake line is actually gonna run in. We'll be going right down through the floor here with that. Just so you kind of have an idea, you don't want to block that when you mount it either. Now we're going to use two lengths of duplex wire. This is part number 12-2-1. We're going to use this to run down the same path the old brake wire went. That's going to get us inside of that basement area. We'll be able to run our four wires then to the Hydrostar actuator. Just need to cut this off. I'm going to tape these wires to that wire and use it to pull it through. Now we'll feed that in through the hole that exists here already. I'll show you where to find that on the other side so we can pull it through. It's going to be in the first compartment, driver's side, right on the top. You'll see where it's going to run from up here right down along this route. We're not gonna be utilizing this wire for anything anymore, so we're gonna be able to cut that, and we'll start drawing our wire through from the front. Now we're just gonna route our wiring over here so we can make the connections we need. Now, we're gonna use loom clamps to secure our wiring in certain spots. We've got two different sizes. We've got quarter inch, this is part number A0250. We've got half inch, which is part number A0500. Anytime you see us use one of the larger ones, it'll be the big part number, smaller one, small part number. Now, since my wires are very similar, I marked one before I pulled it through. 
We're going to be using the one without marks as our black and white wire from our Hydrostar. We're going to use the one with the marks as the yellow and blue wire from the Hydrostar. These four wires are simply acting as extensions from the Hydrostar to get up here where we can make our other connections. Now we'll just bring our wires back here so we can connect them to the wires off our Hydrostar actuator. I like to run with any factory loom, like there's this wire loom up here. It's already got loom hangers on it, so it's a good opportunity just to use those points to support our wire. I'm going to use a few zip ties just to zip tie these off nice and securely. Wire loom that runs right down here, we'll use that and it'll allow us to get back to our wiring. Now we'll determine how much of our wiring we're gonna need to make our connections here. Looks like that should be a good length. Now, this one that I'm messing with is gonna be the one that has the yellow striping. So we're gonna treat this as the yellow and the blue wire. Just wanna cut the sheathing off the outside of it there. Don't wanna do any damage to the actual wires. We have those exposed, let's strip them back. We're gonna add on a couple heat shrink butt connectors, part number DW05745. All right, with our connectors on there, we'll connect them to the actuator itself. We're gonna use the black wire as the blue wire and the white wire as the yellow wire since they're kind of closer to the shade it'd be easy to remember get that slid in and crimp down now we're going to do the same thing for the other wire same connectors just going to do black to black and white to white Now we're going to use a heat source to shrink these down. You can use a mini torch, you can use a heat gun, or like we're using a lighter here. It's going to do a little bit of heat at a time, and you'll see those start to shrink up around our wiring. Once they get fully shrank down, the wire is going to look like it gets a lot bigger, almost twice the size. And then there's a little clear gel that runs out of the end of it. Now once we're up in this area, we've got a junction box underneath here. That's where we're going to pick up the blue wire from our truck, which will be our brake controller signal. That's going to go to the black wire that we attach to the blue wire off the actuator. Let's get these separated. We're going to run our ground on over to the factory ground there. So we're going to split our wires apart so we can separate them. I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to clean this up. We can tape this up all the way to about that point. We'll use a quarter inch bit driver. We'll pull this cover out of the way. Here's our blue wire where it comes from the seven way, which is the plug on the back of your truck. Strip the end of that off, cut off our blue wire from the actuator. Strip that back, then we'll use another one of our yellow butt connectors to connect them together. One thing I want to point out while our cover is still off is that we have a power lead that runs off through the factory harness and it comes back out right here. This is gonna be the 12 volt power wire that we're gonna use for the actuator and for our breakaway box, just so you have a heads up. You wanna leave this one intact when you're taking everything apart. Also, if you have any wire nuts in here, replace them with a heat shrink connector. Wire nuts just don't really hold up to moisture and things like that that we usually get here on the front of the camper. 
Now we can get our cover put back into position to cover those couple connections. Just going to replace the same hardware we removed the first time. Now the white wire that's acting as our yellow wire from the actuator is going to get connected to one side of our breakaway switch. Now the wire on my breakaway switch, I'm going to strip that back about twice as far as what you normally would. That'll allow me to double that over. Give me plenty of wire for the butt connector to hang on to. Now we'll separate out our other two wires here. These are the actual black and white wires from our actuator. I'm going to bring these three wires after I tape them up over the top of that angle steel. Start making our connections. We'll get the end of those stripped back on each one. Now we'll connect the blue wire from the breakaway switch to the blue wire from the breakaway box. For this connection, we'll use DW05744. Same principles apply to it, it's just going to be a little bit smaller connector. Now it's time for us to attach our ground wire. See, we're going to add the one from our breakaway kit and the one from our actuator into the same side and we'll make just a short jumper so when we have this taped off we can bring it to this connector. Now to make that connection we'll use just a ring terminal. It'll be a 5 16 Pull that ground stud out and we'll attach it in behind there. Now I'm going to bring the 12 volt power wire from our vehicle over, we'll get it trimmed off and we're going to splice it together with the black wire coming from the breakaway kit. And that's going to go to the black wire from our actuator. Now we'll get all of our connectors heat shrink, we'll get some tape around there to clean up the look and we'll use a couple more loom clamps to keep everything up and out of the way. Now to begin plumbing our actuator, we need to come off the red port here and we need to make way outside of the trailer. So however you've decided to do that, wherever you've decided to mount your actuator, we need to find a good access point to head out. Now, if we look underneath the camper here, if you decided to go in this area, right over in this area, We've got a good open shot to where we can drill down through the floor here. We'll also make a hole in that underpinning, that black plastic that runs along the bottom. Now to get ours outside, we're going to be using the flexible brake line hose. It's got a 90 degree fitting on the end, so we can put that in the end of our actuator and run it down and through a hole that we're going to create. I'm going to use a 7 8 inch hole saw here, go down through the floor. You just want to ensure that there's no objects underneath there you might cause damage to, whether it's wiring or gas lines or black water tank hoses. None of that stuff do you want to drill through or cut a hole through, so make sure you don't have any of that underneath. To do that, I would cut a very small hole in the underpinning underneath and look up through. That's usually the best way to see. But once you've confirmed that, we're ready to get our hole drilled. out of there first and we'll go through the wood. Now we'll wrap that down through our hole, through the hole in that underpinning. We're going to need leave enough room to where we can make our connection up here but we're not going to connect it just yet. If we do likely the brake fluid inside of here is going to start running out and it'll make a mess. So make sure you've got enough length up here. Then we can head underneath and start plumbing the hard lines. Now we'll move to the calipers where we'll get our flexible rubber lines attached. Now on each line you're going to have a 90 degree, 
and a straight side fitting. We're gonna use the 90 degree to go into the caliper. Got a red plug right here. That's just gonna thread out. Make sure our brake line is nice and square and we'll get that started. Now you're gonna route this up to where you plan on attaching your components. We're gonna be going up above the, above the spring inside of the frame. So right in this area should be pretty ideal for making our connections where we want them. Then we're gonna tighten up the nut. That's gonna compress the flare against the inside fitting there. Should be positioned where we want it so we can get our T and our lines mounted in here. Let's go around and we'll take care of that at each of the other locations. Just be sure that you've got enough room between, like here we've got the U-bolt bracket or the U-bolt plates. We don't want to have our brake line rubbing up against that, so just keep that in mind. Now we're gonna get our hard lines ran. I'm gonna start with the longest piece in the kit. You just wanna kind of flex it gently to get it straightened out. Then we'll run it from near the front driver's side caliper up to where we had the flexible brake line coming out of the actuator. And I like to keep this tucked up as far as we can to the bottom of the RV. So I'm gonna run it over the pipes, the little levers and stuff that are here. Now we'll take the fitting from our flexible line. We're going to insert the male portion from our hard brake line and we're going to get those connected together. These are 3 8 on the small side and the 5 8 on the larger. And we're going to snug these down to get them pretty secure. When we test the system, if we have any leaks, we can tighten them down a little bit more. Now I'm going to flex that line just slightly. We'll go right up to that first hanger that keeps that gas line in place. We're gonna back that off. Put one of the clamps right around it. Then we'll re-secure both of those to the same location. Now I'm gonna use these mounting locations as they go down through there, pretty much all the way back to the actual calipers themselves. See, that's gonna hold that nicely right up against the bottom. Right up here, we're gonna put a piece of wire loom around that, and then we'll fill it in with some silicone sealant. Once we get back to this area, we're gonna put a small bend to bring it up, and then we'll put another small bend there to kind of keep it straight. Using a tubing bender like this is gonna help you to ensure that you get nice bends without any major angles on it. The worst thing you can do is pinch the line. That'll cause it so it won't work. Now here at the first caliper, I'm gonna bring that rubber line, or that flexible brake line, up over the gas line. And we're gonna anchor it right over here. When we're using the flexible line, we'll use the slightly larger loom clamp. Now we're ready to put our T in place there. Now we'll bring our hard line right up to our T here. We want to mark it. We're going to split that and add a double flare to that tip. If you don't want to do the double flare, you can make coils that will come down and take up the slack. You just remember closest to the actuator is gonna be the top of your coil, closest to the brake caliper will be the bottom of your coil. Now if you do have a need to make a coil, if you're not gonna be cutting your lines, basically we just wanna use our tool. Just keep working it and you can make some nice little tight coils. Remember though, we don't want to bend this so it's restricted. You can see how that's still nice and open. It's just bent and you just kind of keep working that around. And you kind of get the idea how you'll make 
Just some really nice, tight little coils. And that's gonna take up whatever extra length that you might have. Just keep coiling it. But in our style, we're just gonna take our flaring kit and follow the instructions. Now with that flare done, we can add that into our tee. And we'll come back to the next one on the driver's side. Now in this fitting, we've got a union, which is just going to be a straight pass through. So now we'll get our next brake line measured and either coil and attach it or Use your double flare tool and make the line the appropriate length. Now we'll make our cross to go from the driver's front here to the passenger side front. We've got a T to go in that forward location. That's taken the place of the four-way T that we used on the driver's side. And the last connection we'll make here will be to the master cylinder. Now do this pretty quick because there's going to be a little bit that comes out of there once you unscrew it. I just want to get it threaded in. Just like that. We'll put a little wire loom around this top edge too to protect it. Now I'm gonna replace the circle that we cut out with the hole saw. We're gonna go around the edge of that with some black silicone sealant just to make sure we don't have any areas where we get might get moisture or anything like that coming up into the bottom side of the camper. Now you wanna grab some fresh unopened brake fluid. We'll start bleeding out the system. We're gonna start with the actuator itself. The bleeder screw for it is right here. But first step, we're gonna be make sure we got plenty of brake fluid in the unit itself. Now for a bleeder bottle, we're just gonna use an airline that fits over the top of the bleeder valve. I'm gonna run that into a bottle. We've got a little brake fluid there at the bottom so we can watch bubbles as they come out. Once the bubbles quit, we'll know we've got the actuator bled. Gonna place that up there so we can see it. Gonna hold that down over the top. All right, go ahead. You'll hear the actuator humming there. That means it's building pressure. And we'll just loosen that screw. You can see the air bubbles. The clear tube also helps. All right, go ahead and put it back in. All right. 
And once our actuator's bled out, we're gonna repeat that process for the brake caliper that's furthest away from the unit. So in our case, we're gonna go passenger rear, passenger front, driver rear, driver front. So we keep working closer to the actuator. All right, go ahead. Okay. And with that blood out, we'll move forward. Okay. Okay. Okay, hold it. Now with that installed, we'll just put our panel back in. That'll keep it nice and protected. We won't have to worry about it. And that's gonna complete our installation of the Hydrostar Electric Over Hydraulic Actuator, part number CAR-HBA16-2 on our 2005 New Way Hitchhiker. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.